All right, so next up is how to do a butt joint, which is two either factory or non-factory edges that are the flat side, not the tapered edges. So we have to do this section all the way up to the top. Come on, go up. And then all the way down to the floor. So in order to do that, we're going to be using mesh tape. We're not going to use paper tape because we have sections like right up here that are about as thick as my finger for a difference. And mesh tape is really a lot easier to work with on that. At least I think so. And we also have to blend in going from about here all the way over to this section where the tape used to be. Well, the tape used to be right here for where this joint was and then blend it over to here into this section. So we're gonna walk through how to do that here. The main things we're gonna need is just some mud, a six inch tape, at least a 12 inch tape, and my preference will be mesh tape for this. So let's get to it. All right, so we're gonna start off, we're gonna take our mesh tape and go from the bottom here up to about the halfway point. Then I'm gonna stop, cut it off, only for video purposes. You would ideally do a strip all the way up with no breaks, but I don't have a cameraman, so in order to get the full shot, we'll do two separate parts. So center your, uh, your mesh tape. Now this stuff does have a slight adhesive, which makes it a lot easier to work with. If you try to stick this into wet mud, it does not stick at all. All right, so we can see where the, the old tape uh, line used to be. So I'm just kind of going a hair over that. And then we're gonna cut it off there. We just grab our six inch knife, put it at the edge and then tear across, nice and simple. Once you have it on, go ahead, press it in. I don't recommend using a knife for this, some people do, because it sometimes will just kinda tear the tape a little bit, but that's it. Go ahead, put that on. We'll go ahead and do the top part in a sec. All right, so for the top half, we're gonna, oh, I'm gonna have to stretch for this one. <laughs> Too short, I didn't bring a step stool. Go ahead and put our tape all the way up there. There we go. And bring it on down. The main thing we want to do is make sure we do not overlap our two tapes. So once we get down here, get right to the edge. And then we're going to place our knife right where that piece is. So right there, tear across. And go ahead, press it all in. Cause you don't really want any gaps in your, in your uh, tape here because it can lead to cracking. And the reason that I like to use mesh tape for this type of scenario is because we have such a large gap here. I don't have to pre-fill it. And also because of how big of a spot this is here, and I said that's about as thick as my finger. If I use paper tape, if I have to sand it at all, I'm almost guaranteed to hit the paper tape and cause issues with the, the tape tearing out, which looks terrible. And it's just a lot easier for me to blend with the mesh tape. Paper tape is stronger, but this will create a strong enough finish for what we're doing. Um, if this was a wall that would have a lot of flexing, like uh, an interior wall, so the wall that's behind me, not this outside wall, I would go with paper tape because that is stronger. But we've got our tape up, so the next up here, mix up our mud and start to get it on the wall. All right, so for this, we are going to mix up a little bit thinner than usual. So we have a cup of water now the temperature of your water does make a huge difference. I'm using lukewarm water, not, not hot, not cold. Uh, if you have hot water, it will cause your mud to dry two to three times faster. So this 90 minute mud go down to, you know, 30 or 45 minute mud. With medium water, you know, I'm looking at probably about an hour time. And I never get it all in the bucket. And the reason I'm, I'm using a little bit warmer water, oh man. <laughs> is because I, I only want an hour's time. I don't need the full 90 minutes. So it never fails, <laughs> every time. Uh, I, I know I don't have enough water in, so you always start off with putting some water in and then add in afterward. And the reason you put the water in first is it guarantees it doesn't get stuck at the bottom. All right, so I can tell right now I have <laughs> nowhere close to enough water. Toss some more in. So we're going for thinner more so than thicker. 
just so that way I can make sure it gets all deep into the, the mesh taping there. And make sure your, your drill or mixing bit hits the bottom. You can do this by hand, but really not recommended. Yeah, doing it by hand, not the best. It takes forever. So we're looking for about the consistency of very thick pancake batter. We're not quite there yet. So a little bit more water. And go sparingly, water does very quickly uh, make it very thin. All right, so we can see we've got just a little bit of movement. That's good. All right. Next up is getting it onto our hawk. I prefer a hawk over a trough. That's just personal preference. Whenever you go to do this part, get a bucket or something that you can uh, stick your hawk in. It makes life so much easier. That way you're not trying to hold it or balance it while you tear mud, throw mud onto it. So scoop out. Toss it on. Now I'm gonna put the whole cup on there because it's just easier. Uh, this is going to be way too much mud. You're going to have to throw some of this away. That's fine. That bag right there is like 10 bucks and it does a lot of drywall. Uh, I could probably do most of this house with that bag. So I never feel bad wasting this stuff. Now if you buy the pre-mixed, uh, you'd have to be a little bit more careful of course. You don't want to have your Pre-mix expose the air longer than you have to because it starts to dry up. And once it starts to dry up, it's done. I mean, yeah, you can add a little bit of water to keep, you know, re reactivate it some, but it's not great. All right, grab our other knife. One, two. Okay, so that's all of our mud. Now, we're ready to get it on the wall. All right, so for recording purposes, I can't get the very top and the very bottom in the shot. I don't have a cameraman, so we're just gonna work with the range that we have. I'm gonna do the whole bit and I might have to edit a little bit of video. So you should always start either at the top or the bottom, but as I said, since video purposes, I'm gonna start right here in the middle, work my way down. So start off grabbing mud, and there's a hair on there. And when you apply it in, press in for the mesh tape. What that's going to do is actually press it into these gaps here. Now, if you have a, a step up like this, go towards the step up, that way you know it's forced in. Gets your excess mud in. We're just gonna do this all the way down. Now, as I said, I mixed up way too much mud. I know that, that's fine. Actually, it's also a little too thin, but that's okay. It will dry, it will start to set up and dry, no big deal. You could always turn the fan on. So when you're working with mud, uh, especially if it's hot mud and even with the, the pre-mixed stuff, try not to have your, your ceiling fan on. You will dry out your mud very quickly. So right now, all we're doing is we're just slopping the mud in. And you see I'm going all the way to the edge where I wanna go. And I'm gonna hit my outlet. <laughs> yeah. So if you get mud somewhere you don't want it, it's not that big of a deal. It cleans up very easily with just a rag and water. Okay. I don't know how much of this next part will be in frame. Oh, I can feel my mic. Okay, so, <laughs> damn it. All right, so I can feel that I've got as much mud as needed in here. And we're just gonna scrape off the excess. And we can see little spots like right here where I don't have enough mud here. We'll go back, we'll add mud in. But for right now, we're just taking off the excess. And that's why I like the, the hawk, it's just easier to work with. And continue up. This is just our first coat. We're gonna have to do two or three coats depending on how it turns out. So you don't have to worry too much like, oh, is it pretty? Does it look good? Doesn't matter. And so we're gonna have to feather out, especially right here, to probably about here. So keep that in mind as you're adding mud in if you have two uneven surfaces, like I do. And yes, we could talk about how I could have done more work to get all this even but this wall is not really <laughs> great to begin with. So this is on a concrete wall, cinder block wall. And on the wall is, I 
I think they're about half inch furring strips. And then one layer of drywall and then another layer of drywall. So if I really wanted to get this even, it, it, would, it would just would have been a nightmare. I can easily take and use mud to do all this. And I know I'm mostly in this shot, I apologize. Whenever you're dragging your, your knife down, you kind of want to be at about a 45 degree angle. Stretch. Ideally you would have a ladder, but there's not enough space for camera equipment and ladder and being able to work effectively, so. All right, so now that we've got mud all over the wall, check for your, your low spots. So here, 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 you can see it's got, you can tell mud is missing. So just press it in, gently take it off. Remove excess mud. All right, so right here, this is the, the spot that's the, the big gap. You can see there is still a huge section just a, of mud missing there. So what we're gonna do, Take a very large chunk of mud, just plaster it in right there and gently go over it. Now, we don't want to remove all the mud. We just want to remove you know, the, the excess. So put the tip of your knife against the wall over here and keep this side level on the wall over here. You're not applying a whole lot of force. You're just moving the mud away and we can start to see where we're at. So we can see right here, it's perfectly feathered in. Up here though, it's still very high. So we know we're going to have to bring this out more. So, a little bit more mud there. Don't be afraid to use more mud. Same thing, so right along the edge. And now we can see we have this beautiful, perfect feather, which will make when we go to do our second layer much easier. So right here, it's a little low. So put the edge of your knife right here and just float it across very gently. And we have a low spot all throughout here. That's okay. I'm actually going to leave it a little low for now because when I go to do my second layer, it'll just be a little bit easier to work with. So go ahead, remove our excess, clean up down here. I'll have to clean up my light socket in a second or my outlet in a second. All right. Did I just, no, okay. Thought I dropped on the floor. So let's see, where else do I need mud? Up here. My short self. Now the main thing we want to do before we end this is feather all of our edges so it looks like this. The way you do that, take the edge of your knife, put it against the wall, and keep the other end flat. So as long as we feather all of our edges, it'll make the second layer a lot easier. You won't have to sand, you won't have to do any of that terrible work, and you can go ahead and put your second layer on. Apparently there's a tack strip under me. That didn't feel good. All right. So I'm gonna clean up a little bit around here just off camera. And then once this dries in about an hour, we'll come back, we'll do our next coat. All right, so we're about ready for our second coat. And whenever I go to do my second coat or even third coat, I like to see just how far I am when it comes to needing to add mud. So easiest way you can do this, and I hope this shows up on camera, is get your long knife around, uh, this is a 14 inch, and look for light coming through. So we can see up here, we've got, what is that? Maybe a eighth of an inch, almost quarter inch gap right here. So we know we're gonna have to add a lot of mud and fade all the way out to here we want to have this wall look completely flat. You can do that all the way down, see this is how much you need to fill in. And that's what we're gonna be working on with our second coat, is filling in and make sure all that looks good. So I've already mixed up my mud, let's uh, get to it. 
All right, so we've got our mud. I did mix this up a bit thicker because I know I'm going to have to uh, a pretty large amount up through here and then down through here. So a little bit thicker mud, that way it just spreads a little bit more smoothly. Now, one of the things that you should be a little wary of whenever you're mixing your mud is not to put too much air into it. So if you're using, uh, if you're doing it by hand, that's usually not too much of an issue. You're not gonna get a whole lot of air. But if you're using a, a paddle bit like what I am, you'll see all these little bubbles start to form. And you can work the bubbles out. You, know, you can take your mud on here, just really spread it out first. That gets all the, all the air bubbles out. I like to do it while it's on the wall. It doesn't bother me too much. If I end up having too many air bubbles in the end, I just do a final coat at the end. It's not a big deal to me. So we just start off putting a lot of mud on the wall. So we know we have to come all the way out to here because we, we could see just how much the, the light was coming through. So just get a ton of mud on the wall and then we will remove it in a moment. Oh, I'm restricted by my microphone. Oh no! And I know I don't really need to go higher than this mark here on the wall. But I will put a little bit of mud up to it still. And we're not gonna be doing all the way up there on camera. I'll do that off camera because I need a ladder. <laughs> I, I'm too short, so. Okay, it looks like for the most part, we're doing pretty well. Use probably a little bit more there. That's it, right now it's just get the mud on the wall, take it off in a moment. And through here is actually pretty flat because I already did the, uh, the factory joint. So I know I'm not gonna have to go out too far there. And down here actually isn't too bad either because the wall is mostly flat. It's up there that's the issue. All right, so I've got pretty much all my mud on the wall. Maybe we'll just, uh, yeah, right there you can have it. So now, go ahead and take my 14 inch knife. You can use a 12, I just, I like the 14. And start at about a, yeah, we'll say about a 60 degree angle, and then we're gonna bring it down to a 45 as we come down. So start off nice and strong. Oh, camera's unhappy with me. I'm pulling, pulling too much, I'm sorry. And come down to about 45. And you're going to just aggressively get a little bit more shallow with your angle. All right, and we have a lot of mud. You can see there's a huge pocket there, pocket there. So go ahead, remove your mud, and do it again. Fills in a lot of those pockets, we get more of the mud off. You can see just how much we're taking off. A ton of mud. But if we look, come right here. Okay, we're a lot more even. You know, there's still some light coming through, especially up there because I can't get a whole lot of mud. But over here, we're just about filled in. Right there we are completely filled in. So I know that I can feather that out and that'll look great when it's done. Right, come down from the bottom, same thing. I'm really bad at going up, but. Okay. So now it's just gonna be a matter of fill in and then feather out. So once I'm done, I'm gonna take the edge of my knife, make sure it's flat against the wall over here on the left, and then keep this side just even with the, the wall over here and just really feather it out. You can see it takes off all the corner edges of the mud there. All right, so as I said, I'm gonna kill the video here because I need a step stool and I can't get that with the ladder in here. So we'll take a look once it's done. All right, so here we are with our second coat. Now, obviously it has time to dry. And uh, we're, the reason we're not too worried about the very top there is because I still have to do a lot more work. Plus there's gonna be crown molding. As we come down, if we look right through here and hopefully it shows up on video, I got some bubbles. Uh, I tried to work them out, they wouldn't come out. Not a big deal. As I said, for my third coat, I will be doing a very light skim coat and it will take care of those. And as we come on down, we can see got the whole bottom feathered out. And I tried not to get too much mud at the very bottom there because that's gonna be another video of a butt joint to a factory joint, which is kind of similar to what we're doing, honestly. But that's it. So you can see we are filled in almost completely everywhere that we need to be. Uh, looks like I need to add a little bit more right through here with my final coat. That's fine. 
And then what we're going to do before we actually put our final coat on is wet sand. And we will go over that uh, tomorrow morning, it looks like, because it's uh, 2 a.m. right now. And I'm going to be going to bed and let this dry. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Well, a few seconds for you. All right, so before we go ahead and do our third and final coat to fill in these little bubbles and fix just the last little bits here, we do need a wet sand. You could dry sand. Uh, it makes a huge mess. I prefer wet sanding. So you want a sponge that's damp, not dripping wet. It's dripping, it's too wet. And you're going to use light pressure just to go along the edges here to feather out the last little bit. And if there's any high spots, like over here, there's a couple of high spots, we'll go ahead and remove those. So, right along the edge. You can see it, it takes off the mud very easily. Now, if you do this before it's completely dried, like if it's uh, you know, been setting up for an hour or two, that's honestly the best time to do it. But I went to bed after I finished the last coat, so now we have to sand a little bit more. It takes a little more force. So we just clean up our edges. And if your sponge starts to get actually filled up, go to a new section, new side. And I won't be able to get up there until I get a ladder. So like right here, I have a, a huge section of mud, so I just need to go ahead and move that. Just like that, it comes off. That's why if you get mud on something, it's not the end of the world. It comes off pretty easily. And so we're just smoothing everything out. All right. Keep a bucket nearby to clean out your sponge. And this is it. This just gets you ready for your third and final coat if you need it, which nine times out of 10, you need a third coat. Uh, not many people can get a, a second coat to look good, but the this, this skim coats really just kind of help out. When we go to do the skim coat in a little bit here, we're going to mix up our mud and it's going to be very thin. It's a very light coating that we'll be going over with. And so like right here, it's a little rough. So just go ahead. That takes it away. Now, if you use too much pressure, you will start to gouge into the mud that you have here already. Cause as you can see, like with this section where it's too high, just a couple of quick passes and it goes away. So you do have to be careful cause you can very easily take off the mud that you have on the wall. And then you create more work for yourself. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish wet sanding all this here. And then we'll come back for our third and final coat and we'll check to make sure everything looks good. All right, so it's time for our third and final coat, which is just a, a very thin skim coat. So it's to fill in small little bubbles like this, little imperfections here, through here, a little scratch here. That's all this coat's for. So this mud is mixed up much thinner. Uh, I, it can actually fall off my trowel if I'm not careful. So very thin mud. And all this is, is just to fill in these areas. Apply it on. And I have way too much mud. <laughs> That's okay. I throw away a lot of mud. So like usual i'm not gonna go all the way up to, to the top or to the bottom because i can't get that on camera so just go ahead get it on the wall and for this coat we're going to make sure we don't have any bubbles left over when we're done so if you have a bubble just go over it again if you have to go across the other way and just keep working it till there are no bubbles and we're going to do that for pretty much the whole wall we're just going to add a skim coat here, go across, bring it down. And like usual, we're just getting mud on the wall right now. Way too much mud. And we're gonna take it all off. And you can see just how much thinner this is just by how easily my knife just goes through it. So that will go a little bit lower. All right. So we're just going to work with this area here and I'll finish up down there off camera. So once you have your mud on the wall, nice and simple, take your 12 or 14 inch knife. I said I prefer the 14 start at about a 60 degree angle and then work down to about a 22 and a half degree angle. So Come down and then bring it down. Keep the left edge or your, your lower wall edge tight against it and kind of float the right edge. You see, 
Oh, we had something in our mud. So we've got a couple of air bubbles still, so we'll have to go over that again, but that's all. Bring it on down. So let's grab our knife, get whatever this is out. Okay. And you can take the mud that's on there and just go over it again. The, the more shallow you put your knife, the more mud it leaves on the wall. And then you just go over it a second time and gets rid of most of the bubbles. And that's that's it. So, so I saw a few bubbles all through here, so put it on a little bit thicker. Start up top. And anytime that you can go from top to bottom or all the way across is best, because then you won't have any lift off uh, lift offs in the middle. So like if I start, say right here, come down, there's now a notable ridge right here. So if I can start from the top and all the way down, makes it much cleaner. There's no ridge there. And that's the easiest way to do your skim coat. So come on up. And I'll keep working this so I have no air bubbles in, uh, which will just be another pass or two. And then we will touch base after I get everything on the wall. All right, so we have our final skim coat on. We just gotta wait for this to dry. You see, it comes out a total of about 12 inches, it looks like. And that's because we're doing a butt joint or two non-tapered edges together. And whenever you have that, you do have to bring it out a little bit more so that way you don't see the bump in the wall because there is a bump there, no matter how you look at it. Uh, if I were to put my knife directly in the center, which I'm not gonna do because it's wet, uh, you would see that it would rock a little bit side to side. And that's okay, because at about 12 inches out, it becomes almost invisible to the human eye. So as I said, we're gonna let this dry. It's gonna take about an hour. I'll taper the edges just a tiny bit with some wet sanding, and then we are done. So we'll see you in a little bit. All right, so here she is all done. You can see we had to go out uh, about 14 inches on the uh, on the top there, and then we were able to come down a bit on the bottom, only about 10 to 12 inches. And then we just have to do a uh, some taping for that bottom line, but that'll be the next video. So uh, all you have to do from here would be to add your texture, your primer, your paint, and then you are good to go. So if you guys have any questions, make sure to uh, drop it in the comment section below. I'll be sure to answer any questions you have. And as always, if you like the content I'm putting out, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you stay up to date with new content as it comes out. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.